is one of the major reasons why these people die. They often have a sudden heart attack or arrhythmia or, you know, uh, the heart just stops. Yes, guys, welcome back to episode seven of the Ultimate Fitness Podcast. Camilla, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Welcome back, guys. And today we have a very special guest. We've got Dr. Nadir Abbas. Introduce yourself. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, hi, guys. I'm Dr. Nadir Abbas. I'm a medical doctor. Uh, I'm also a gut and liver specialist. Um, and I have deep interest in the art of bodybuilding. I'm a big bodybuilding mm-hmm. fan. Um, and being friends with Simon, you know, I've been following bodybuilding for a long time. I also have um, interest in longevity, in particularly men's health. And I'm, yeah, I'm really excited to be here on the Ultimate Fitness Podcast. Um, one of my um, um, bodybuilding, um, you know, idols, Jay Cutler, was here. So I'm just honored to be in the same room as him. Yes, he was here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for coming on. It's, it's a pleasure having you on. And uh, we are going to try and run more educational podcasts in the future. But for today's podcast, we want to talk about mainly about anabolic steroids and how sort of prevalent they are in the industry. I mean, we want to educate people about the dangers, what they actually do to your body, how we can sort of minimize side effects. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go straight in. So, how do sort of anabolic, why do people take anabolic steroids for male and female? Sure, absolutely. So I think, first of all, it's really important to let viewers know that it is a very common occurrence. So anabolic steroids currently are being used, um, well, roughly around half a million people in the UK. I think the real uh, number is partic- uh, probably higher than that. And you'd be surprised to know that most anabolic steroids are being used in the ages of 16 and 24. So these are really young people, right? And these are people who often don't know what steroids do to their body. They don't know how to take them. They probably go to their friend or that bro in the gym and just buy it off the internet and start using it. So it's a real serious problem. And unfortunately, when it comes to awareness around steroid use, we're way behind the world. We're much behind the tide compared to the United States, Europe, um, and Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, um, the medical fraternity doesn't really know or cannot look after these people as well. So there is lack of awareness, uh, lack of understanding. And I think that is causing a catastrophic problems, um, especially in the younger community that are ending up in bodybuilding. Just a question, what actually steroids are made of? Because we don't know what in those substances, it could be anything. Um, yeah. Anyone can take anything at that point. Absolutely. So that's a very good question. Um, so... Our, our bodies, they work on hormones, right? Mm-hmm. So hormones are, some of hormones are steroids themselves. So testosterone, for example, is the male hormone. It is the ultimate male hormone. It's why we look like men. Masculinity, uh, deep voice, muscular physique, mm-hmm. uh, fertility, good hair, good, good skin. All of this is because of testosterone. So testosterone is uh, the hormone. Now, anabolic steroids are essentially man-made compounds of that same testosterone so you know they're made in a laboratory and people tend to inject them obviously at a much higher dose as to what our bodies are normally designed to produce Mm -hmm. Um, often as you know for physique muscular you know appearance endurance uh, we see a lot of this happening in competitive sports bodybuilding and most dangerously, I think, are the recreational users, as I call them. You know, people, young people who just look at their Instagram model and just want to look like them or a Hollywood star and they would start using it without looking at nutrition, exercise or even changing their lifestyle. Just to give a reference point, I mean, for like a healthy male, young male, they release between like 8 to 15 milligram of testosterone a day. That's correct. So what's that, about 100 milligram a week? Yeah. Which is like the, the TRT dose, isn't it? Absolutely. So when people start a cycle of anabolic steroids, they probably start on 500 milligram up to 1,000 milligram, which is 10 times what the body's used to. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, the, yeah, as you said, normal testosterone values range between 8 and 15. And when you're injecting, you know, testosterone esters, you know, the minimum, you know, competition dose, for example, is 250 milligrams. That's what, you know, usually the internet tells you. 
these are supraphysiological doses, right? So you Ex may explain to the viewers what supraphysiological means. So supraphysiological means your physiology is what your body's used to. You're putting in something that's 10 times higher to what your body's used to. So what does that do? When you inject testosterone at that level, your body, our bodies are beautiful, right? So they have this amazing balance of everything in our body. We call it homeostasis, right? There are um, estrogen and testosterone. Estrogen is the female hormone, testosterone is the male hormone. Both men and women have that, but they're in a nice balance. But what happens when you inject external testosterone in your body or take oral steroids is that that balance gets disrupted, right? And because of that, what tends to happen is your body goes into all sorts of different cycles. It starts uh, giving signals for body's own mechanism to shut down. And what we're really causing are a lot of different side effects that we can talk about later on in this podcast. Tell, tell the, the viewers why someone would take steroids, how it would affect their training, recovery, sort of muscle mass strength. Sure. So I think um, before we delve into answering that question, Simon, I think it's really important to also understand the difference between normal TRT, testosterone replacement therapy, in people who have low testosterone. So men... As they grow old, you know, in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the testosterone is declining like this. Now, testosterone is needed for normal body function, you know, mental health, skin, bone density. You know, um, it is a, a real prime hormone that you need. Now, when we see this declining, these patients often tend to turn up to the GP and they're requiring testosterone replacement therapy. This is very different to using anabolic steroids for performance yeah, enhancing. Like medical. Um, Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So these Test are testosterone deficiencies, isn't it? These. This is when people just have low testosterone, and I think this is important because. And that's when they would have to use. It Absolutely. At that point. Yeah. Okay. So this is used through prescription. It's through a legal way. It's done by a doctor. They re replace that uh, testosterone and monitor them. Right. Um, but don't you find GPs in UK are very sort of reluctant to give testosterone therapy? Absolutely. Now. As we talked about this earlier on, we're way behind the tide when it comes to educating. Um, no disrespect to our GP colleagues, you know, they are not medically trained to look after side effects with regards to steroids. There's also incredible complexity, right? It's very complex. There's so many different compounds with so many different side effects. How would they do that? And then they're very busy. They've got a 10 minute appointment. So this is why I think it's really important to empower and educate the viewers telling them as much as we can about different side effects and the importance of getting monitoring, blood work, getting everything checked. Um, it's really important. I remember going to the doctors probably about five years ago with low testosterone, low testosterone symptoms and I got a blood test and went to see the doctor and he, he discovered my testosterone was low and he says, uh, okay, testosterone is low, come back to me in two years and we'll review it again. In two years? Yeah, in two years. <laughs> so I'm supposed to stay low T for two years. No, I think that's that was his answer. Yeah, no. How would you advise um, people, like how often would you advise them to get blood test? Well, say I, six months, every six months? Um, so uh, are we talking about what the pe people who are using anabolic steroids? Yeah. So I think anabolic steroids, the, the issue around anabolic steroids, the, the, the topic becomes quite complex because... At the end of the day, they are considered illegal substances, right? Yeah. So you shouldn't be using it. So it, it, it makes the doctor relationship, a patient relationship quite complex. But again, I think monitoring blood tests is extremely important, okay? Now, why is that so? We know that, you know, there's been lots of deaths in the bodybuilding community, right? Now, and they're often very young people. So why are they dying? You know, we've got Rich Piana who's died. We've got uh, yep, Joe. Uh, anniversary yesterday. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Rich Piana, Joe Winder. Sean Roden, who was an ex just These are all like mid 40s, these bodybuilders. Joe, Joe Lynch. Joe was 30. 30, 30 Joe was 30. Yeah, Rich Piano yeah. was 41. Yeah. Sean Roden was 43. And do you think a lot of these people, what they die because it's the pressure to stay in shape all year round on social media? I think it's a big following. I think it's a combination of a lot of different factors, right? Now, blaming this all on anabolic may not be right. No. There are younger people who also die at 40 years, you know, who are not using anabolic steroids. Would you say, the main reason of them passing away could be obviously overdosing or just getting so obsessed, for example, making sure that your body looks good, that you look good in the bodybuilding industry. That's why, because of the overdosing, they can... That's, that's, that's a very good question. It's very interesting, right? Because is there a safe way to do this as well? Like, how would you speak about this? So... 
it's interesting you say this because when um, they looked at autopsy reports, so when someone dies, they do a postmortem if they don't know the cause, right? Oh, okay. Uh, right. So, twenty-one or twenty-two of the bodybuilders had autopsy done in the last five or ten years that I've looked at, and in most cases, they look at different organs. In most cases, what they found was that their heart was so big. I mean, Rich Piana, I think, had a heart that was 600 grams. You know, Joe Winter had a very enlarged heart. So enlargement of heart, the heart itself, now I'll come on to that, is why that happens, is one of the major reasons why these people die. They often have a sudden heart attack or arrhythmia or, you know, uh, the heart just stops. So, so I think it's important to understand, one, the side effects associated with steroids. You definitely need monitoring. And there's a lot of harm that can be reduced. How, how heavy is the average heart, the uh, male, male heart? I, I don't know the exact grams, but mm. 400 grams seems yeah. much higher. This is at least 1.5 to 2 times, yeah. you know, I would expect that. Um, a very crude way of knowing it is you put your finger in between your fourth and fifth rib. Mm. This is where your heart should, you know, your heartbeat should be located. Mm. Their heartbeat goes and displaces hair mm. because the posterior muscle of the heart gets very big. Okay, because you feel it then. Yeah, so, so it, got, it, it goes hair. Now, when your heart's enlarged, the problem is, as with most muscles, when you're um, using anabolic steroids and putting your body through that pressure of exercise, all muscles increase and heart is essentially a muscle. So it goes bigger and bigger and that produces more cardiac output, meaning more blood flow is flowing through it. Increased blood pressure, that is in itself a side effect that's associated with it. And again, a lot of people would not even get their blood pressure checked. And I was like, why would you do that? It's free, isn't it? You can do it yourself. It's free. It's easily treatable. Um, so there are ways where you can reduce the harm um, in no way promoting use of anabolic stars. But I know people are doing it. And just leaving and burying your uh, head in the sand is just Stupid. not, not the way, right way to go. Mm. Yeah. So how would you... Um Obviously, people, they're going to take steroids regardless whether you tell them not to take them. So, especially people competing. So, what, what's all of the safe protocol? What can you do to offset some of the negative side effects? I think it's, it's important to educate younger people that anabolic steroids are no magic pill. If I start taking anabolic steroids now and don't work out, don't have the right diet, nothing's going to happen. Mm. I'm just going to have that steroid in my body, will have side effects, will not grow any muscle, probably die quicker. Mm. So. I think nothing ever substitutes good diet, good training regimen, good sleep, hydration, and obviously monitoring yourself. Quite, you know what? There's a lot of coaches that put pressure on their clients and not, I wouldn't say they force them, but they would like make them, they encourage them to take steroids. And for example, those clients, they not really aware what it does to your body. Um, but also there are people who think that obviously steroids going to make them obviously bigger, but they don't take into the consideration the, um, the diet and training, which is like 80%, 80%. Absolutely. It's not just only in the body building world, right? I'm a liver specialist and we see a lot of fatty liver, people who are fat and have a lot of fat in their liver. The hardest thing to change in our lives are our lifestyle. It's very easy to take a pill. If I take, you say, just give me a medication. Mm. But if I tell you, reduce this 20 kilograms excessive weight, you won't be able to do that. You'll find it hard or start exercising. They're like, we've never entered a gym. How can we exercise? So I think this is where we, as we're always looking for they short will, fixes. Yeah, they will choose the easier route. Absolutely. Instead of Especially if it's habits work. they've developed over many years. Absolutely. And eating, eating bad food. And even going on anabolic steroids for them is a short-term fix to looking mm. good, which it isn't because it takes years and years and years of practice and bodybuilding, you know, um, spending time in the gym to actually get physiques that they see on the internet. Um, the other thing, Simon, I think are really important to um, kind of tell viewers is, is the liver damage because yeah. I'm being a liver specialist. I, um, it's especially oral steroids. I find oral steroids, Dynabol, Winstrol, yeah, so to explain to the viewers, there's two different types of steroids. You've got the injectable, which people normally think are the worst, and the oral steroids, the tablets. Yeah. Would you say which one's worse or like they both pretty much the same? Yeah. So the thing about, um, so there are two types. One is the injectable type where you, you draw it up in an injection and you, you know, um, inject it into a muscle. Um, these are intramuscular steroids, so testosterone, nandrolone, trembolone, et cetera, et cetera. 
The other forms are much easily available. People tend to find that they're easily, because they can just take it orally, they don't have to inject. A lot of young people would go down the route of taking things like Dynabol, Winstrol. Because remember, have a needle phobia as well. Exactly. Yeah. Needle phobia, yeah. you know, um, get, getting needles, just, just having that kind of, uh, you know, oh, I don't want to inject myself. Yeah. But actually, oral steroids are far worse. And that's because they go through the liver. So the liver has to metabolize or get rid of them. Whereas intramuscular steroids would bypass the liver and go straight into the yeah, blood. I've, I've met someone, um, it was a woman, uh, she does bodybuilding. She did say, mention that oral um, steroids are way much worse than the injectable. Absolutely. Often. I've seen, I mean, I can recall a few patients I've seen with severe liver injury, liver failure. Um, the newer um, steroids, selective estrogen receptor modulator, SERM or SOMS, they're even worse. They are because they're not, we don't know what's in them. There are lots of different companies making them. And, you know, they uh, promise great results and young people take them and they're absolutely catastrophic for the liver. One of the things that it, it does cause um, long-term side effects is, is liver cancer. And Arnold Schwarzenegger had one. You know, he had a hepatic adenoma, which is a liver cancer, which he had excised. And this again tells you the importance of getting yourself checked out. He would have been dead by now if he wouldn't have had that ultrasound that picked up that. that. I think that's from like taking a lot of oral steroids. Yeah. So I remember back in the day when Arnold first started training, all, they, all around was like Dino Bowl. Yeah. And I remember watching interviews, he used to take like 20, 30 Dino Bowl for breakfast. Yeah. Imagine like the calls on your, on your liver, the stress on your liver. And back then, back then there was, there were pharmaceutical, it was not like homegrown, homemade steroids. So it was like proper <laughs> pharmaceutical. I, I'm a big fan of Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I always consider him as like the guinea pig when it comes yeah. to using steroids because the Weeder brothers were just like, he was their poster boy, right? And steroids, when they first came in 1930s, 40s, yeah. you know, really Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, a couple of bodybuilders with Lou Frigno, for example. And later on, you know, you had absolute moss ma mass monsters like, you know, Dorian Yates, Lee Haney. Um, you know, all of these people have obviously used steroids. Some of them openly talk about it. Some don't talk about it. Um, but, you know, you can see the sport evolving into a more intense, mm. you know, the, the workout regimes are more intense. The physiques are getting more intense whether it's to do with steroid use or the way we train or diet. Well, it's evolution, isn't it? Everything always progresses, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I was looking at the recent, um, you know, Mr. Olympia, I think you were you were there. Um, Nick Walker, the mutant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at his physique and you're like... It looks like a laboratory experiment gone wrong, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, do, do you know who we're talking about? No, I'm they, not they call sure. It, I'm just they, call it, they call him the mutant, but he's only, he's only young, 28, 29. Oh, yeah. But he's just... He's just got, he's not been proportioned, he's just huge, isn't he? Yeah. He's not, is it that black guy? No. He's a huge one. Was, no, that's Andrew, but uh, he's just... No, not Andrew Jack. There's other one. There was <laughs> other one. I have no idea what was his name. You should look at Nick Walker. Honestly, yeah. he does not look real. I mean, he has got, he's got like 20 packs in front of like huge mass monsters. Yeah, he's not put together nice, but he's, he's a freak. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And this just tells you the way the, 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 the bodybuilding... Um, you know, sport has evolved over the years. Um, yeah. Would you say it, w it was better before than now because of how the steroids affecting people now? Obviously, they're going mental over it and they just overdoing it, overdoing it, and they, their body just doesn't look right anymore. I think steroids have always been there, right? Um, obviously, they've become more in ge genetically and, you know, in the laboratory, they've made them um, they're getting uh, like evolution, right? So they're getting better at what they tend to do. So more masculine effect, more muscle mass. But I think um, if you look at the deaths from, uh, you know, in the bodybuilding community in the last five years, they've been the highest, right? And that just tells you that there is something not right, whether this is excessive use, whether this is intense pressure of um, bodybuilding, you know, um, competitions. It's very difficult or, or it's just our, our diet. You know, bodybuilding is very extreme sport anyway, especially at Mr. Olympia level. It's people will do absolutely anything just to win, won't they? Absolutely. I don't think they care about no. if they're going to live another five years. And I think this is this is also very important. I think we need, you know, fitness and looking good and being in shape mm. are not always synonymous, right? Being fit means you are in the best physical and mental well-being. You know, you're going to live longer, a healthier life. Cardiovascular fitness. Well, but right? extreme sports, whether it's bodybuilding or any other sport. You know, it's it's not always 
the, no. the you know related to longevity. Let's put it this way. Well, most competitive bodybuilders, they sort of you look at their internal organs. They're all pretty much. Would you say it's like one of the unhealthiest sports? Would you consider it? I, I think so. I think so. I think the, re the, the reason being... Especially competitive bodybuilding. Competitive bodybuilding. I think yes. bodybuilding in itself is great. You know, obviously, m muscle is now known to increase your lifespan. You know, you can live longer. You have better bone mineral density. Um, you know, you have more virility as a man. You know, it's just muscle is great. But, you know, obviously using anabolic steroids, going on those extreme diets... You know, some of these people abuse other drugs alongside, you know, the anabolic steroids, amphetamines, recreational drug use, cocaine, all that stuff. All of these things, you know, they just put massive pressures on your body and it's just crazy. Um, we haven't even talked about kidney disease, mental health. and Yeah, that, you know, that's one of the topics that can be discussed you know what? Cause in the next episode. Anabolic steroids are very addictive. Yeah. Because yeah, when, when you, I'm, I'm talking about my own experience here. So when you're in the gym... And you start a cycle, you start every session, you're getting stronger, you're getting bigger. People are noticing that you're getting more hint. You don't want to come off that train. And when you do come off it, when you have to come off it, and you come to a period where you lose 20, 30% of the weight, you get weaker, you don't recover as well. It's like, okay, I'm going to stay on for another six weeks. The next six weeks becomes 12 weeks. Then you down a down vicious cycle. I agree with you. I want to touch on that. So, you know, when men, for example, you, Simon, when you stop doing bodybuilding and obviously... Competitive bodybuilding. Yeah, that's right. And then what happens after? Would you, like, what happens when you come off the cycle? Mm. What happens with your body? Because, for example, when I was watching some social media, I see men looking completely different to mm. what they looked before when they did competitive bodybuilding. Yeah. That, no, Does that mean they have to continue using it but like a small dose depends, or? depends how you manage your post-cycle therapy PCT so when you take a long course of anabolic steroids your own testosterone shuts down so you have to take different drugs to kickstart your own testosterone production and that may take a while it may take a month two months but the idea is to come off all steroids in order for your own testosterone to come back naturally well not naturally but with a help from things like HCG HMG Clomid Tamoxifen but the trend now is to sort of bridge between cycles. So they come off a course of anabolic steroids and they stay on a low course of anabolic steroids in between courses. But back then, we never did that. We just came totally off. But now the trend is to sort of cruise between courses. That's correct. Yeah. The, the issue again is because these are, you know, at the end of the day, illegal substances being used there's no science behind any of this stuff right it's all experience mm -hmm. and how someone before you has done it now you ask the question about what happens when they come off or they stop professional bodybuilding you'll find often because these people especially mr olympias and ifbb pros they're been using steroids anabolic steroids for years often decades their own body production of testosterone is completely shut down their bodies just forgotten about how it can produce natural natural steroids. So you will find that they will have no own testosterone production. They almost always have to be on some kind of testosterone to for a for replacement for the, rest the for the rest of their lives. And if they stop, what they tend to happen is that they will get all the side effects of low testosterone. They'll have low mood, they'll have, you know, no energy, their sleep's gonna be bad, they'll have no sex drive. So to counteract that, what you'll find is that these people are, as, as Simon mentioned, cruising. You know, they're just using smaller, smaller doses. And this is why I think it's important to educate the younger viewers, the ages of 20s and 30s. This is not the time. You, should, well, you shouldn't be using steroids anyway, but this is not the time. Your male organs are being, uh, you know, um, um, they're being matured. Um, you know, you, will, you have a family. You may need to, you know, have kids. Um, and it affects all of that. And I think, you know, again, we can talk, do a whole episode on how it affects fertility in men and women, um, you know, how it causes problems with your sperms, and, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a real problem. Yeah, I don't think, I think when you're young, you don't really think about 10, 20 years down the line, you just think, I've got a competition next year, this is what I'm going to train for, yeah. not knowing the long-term damage staying on for so long will do. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you don't think about, you know, you'll need a family later mm -hmm. on, the effect it has on, on liver. And this is why we, when we see these people coming to hospitals, um, they're young. They're in their 30s, you know, 20s or 30s. So I think it's really important to educate them. Um, you know, having things like blood work checked, ECG, an echocardiogram to look at your heart, 
having your liver function test, having your blood pressure ch in check, you know, all of these things I think are, are key when it comes to looking at, you know, um, stopping damage, yeah. essentially. As far as the, you want to ask questions about oh, yeah. fertility. Um, I want to touch on a um, female topic. So what kind of, for, for example, steroids do female take and how does that affect them? How would you talk about this? Sure, sure. Touch up about females. Yeah, absolutely. So we no now know that females, again, you know, female bodybuilding is a sport itself. And, uh, you know, they are using anabolic steroids, okay? Often people use testosterone as their base steroid and then have a stacking or a pyramid. No, not, not also female bodybuilding, but even bikini girls take steroids now. Okay. It's really it's quite... Even like tes testosterone? Yeah. Yeah. So, so just so, a very small dose. Just a very small dose. Okay. Yeah. So they will take testosterone. Okay. And what you often end up seeing is that they tend to get almost like men-like features. So you know, prominent jaw, a deep voice, less hair, more masculine physique, acne on the skin, um, and again, that can affect the fertility because what you're doing now is you're introducing a male hormone in your body, again, disrupting the fine balance between... But females do have a little bit of testosterone in them, don't they? Absolutely. Yeah. So females do have a little bit of testosterone in them. In fact, they have higher testosterone than men at a very younger age, mm. and it declines. Mm. So... Is that why women, girls, grow faster than boys? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And, and, you know, estrogen itself is the female hormone, right? It's associated with, you know, having long hair, you know, female bodily features... Mm or, um, you know, that kind of voice, female voice. And, you know, like people who um, now have started using steroids, like women who start using steroids, you, see, you almost see them over years. To a man. Really. Exactly, exactly. And again, that can have effect on fertility, just like it does in men. You know, in men, when they use steroids, their sperm count goes down, their sperm quality changes, their sperm's shape changes. So the sperm itself is a non-quality you know, something that is not able to fertilize an egg. So for them to have kids is, is a major problem. And similarly in, in females, I think this is an issue. What about growth hormone? So I see a lot of bikini athletes injecting growth hormone. What is this and what what's the side effects of ho growth hormone and how is it different from injecting testosterone? Sure. So growth hormone is, is, is a completely different subject and it works on a slightly different receptors in the body. So all these hormones you have to remember are signaling molecules. So they go in the body and then they have to attach to certain receptors to cause effect, right? Now, growth hormone acts on something called insulin growth factor one or IGF one, right? Now, growth factor is a normal hormone that everyone has when they're growing up. So it's at a peak when you're young, when you have that growth spurt, causes your bones to get enlarged, um, causes your body to grow essentially. It stops, for, uh, well, it doesn't stop, but it goes down massively when you reach that, you know, 19, 20 growth spurt age. And after that, you've got, you know, normal levels of growth hormone. What people tend to do then is, it, obviously, a lot of it is in Middle East, America. I'm not sure about how many people in the UK use growth hormone. Uh, it's very... I think the number's quite high, to be honest. Is it? It's more... It's more available now, growth hormone. It's, it's a lot cheaper than it was 20 years ago. Yeah. yeah. So growth hormone itself, you know, biologically, um, it, it's, um, it's a hormone that's associated with, again, better skin, low fat percentage, increased muscle mass. Anti-aging. Anti-aging, um, you know, has a, has a lot of different effects on the body. Now, I, I don't know what the effect of using growth hormone exogenously at this stage is where they're doing bodybuilding would be. Um, I suspect a lot of people are doing it to look good. My experience, if I was to use, or when I have used growth hormone, I use it for mainly fat loss, better sleep quality, uh, recovery. I mean, I, I take growth hormone now. I've been taking it since 1996. I mean, so it's, I just take very small amounts, probably two to three units training days, mainly for like <laughs> skin. And, and do, uh, do, 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 do you find, do you find it helpful then? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's kept me sort of looking young, younger, okay, and uh, recovery. How it helps keep keep, keep me lean. Yeah. yeah, interesting. And it doesn't. And for females, it doesn't have any masculinizing effects. Yeah, it, it won't make deeper in the voice. But you also that's have, why it's very popular within the bikini industry because that's when I found out about growth growth hormone. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean growth hormone is popular in in bodybuilders as well. Mm -hmm. They use it alongside testosterone because they don't interact. They have completely different. Um, 
But but testosterone again is being used by females. Growth hormone, as you said, is again also something that has been there for some time now. I remember back in the day when growth hormone was first introduced to bodybuilding, we're talking like early nineties. It got a bad rap because people thought it made the feet bigger, the hands. Oh yes. Yeah. Acromegaly. Yeah. So, you know, big Kali or all these kind of seven foot yeah. monsters, they all have so increased amount of growth hormone. I was getting wary about having something to change my shoe size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in those individuals, the growth hormones levels are extremely high because yeah. they've almost got a tumor in their yeah. brain secreting that growth hormone. Over, 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 yeah. yeah, absolutely. So before I ask you the main questions, I just wanted you, I just wanted you to answer um what are the side effects of females using the oral anabolic steroids? So, for example, Anavar. Yeah, of course. So, again, first thing, my, you know, because of my own specialty liver, you know, it can cause elevation of your liver enzymes. So, if you check your liver test, they're abnormal. That's number one, which means it's putting pressure on the liver. Number two, again, have has a high risk of liver cancer over years if you continue to use it. There are other effects on the liver as well. I won't go into too much science. Number two kidney disease okay so it can cause microscopic small damage to your kidney tubules which can, which help filter your blood so kidney essentially filters your blood through toxins and you'll find that these people who've been using it for very long their kidney functions are not 100 percent. they're probably a bit lower than that um mental side effects okay so that can affect your mood you can have mood swings um long-term issues can result to fertility problems Acne, acne is a real problem, you know, skin outbursts. Um, so yeah, these are these are the side effects that are often associated with that. Again, as I said, oral steroids, you know, they can affect your liver straight away. Yeah, and Anvar is probably, this, probably the, one of the, the safe, safer drugs yeah. females take. Anvar and went strong. I'd say most females take Anvar. Okay. Not under alone. Yeah. So I think, obviously, we did touch up on the fertility. So... Can anabolic steroids have an impact on a woman's reproductive health, such as fertility or menstrual? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it can because you're essentially introducing a hormone that will disrupt your own balance. Your hormones are in a nice balance. Your estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, all these hormones are essentially associated with um, female you know, reproduction, um, regular menstrual cycles. So you're upsetting that. So absolutely, there is a risk that that can happen. Would you say it's a high percentage? Yeah. It is. Very yeah, it's a high percentage. Now, I won't be able to give a number because yeah. I don't know the studies that have been done in this case. Um, again, I would say it's a high number. Um, and, and all of these side, again, it depends on the person. Not everybody will get all the side effects that are associated. And we don't know why. So it, it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Let's talk about the blood test and uh, what yeah. sort of markers to look out for. You know, so when, when you do go for blood tests yeah. and they get the results back, they just see a lot of numbers yeah. and people don't really know how to read them. Yeah. They just get it back and yeah. people ask me for stuff, but obviously I can tell them the main thing. Sure. So just explain like the, the essential ones to look out for. Yeah, absolutely. So when anyone goes for any blood test, whether it's for anabolic steroid use or any other ill health, there's certain things that we always want to check. The first one is called a full blood count. It includes something called hemoglobin, white cells and platelets. These are the three things we check. We tend to find people who use anabolic steroids, their blood is thicker. They have more hemoglobin, which makes their blood thicker, hence increase risk of having blood clots. So it's very important to monitor your hemoglobin. We often find that the hemoglobin... So if, if you were to have a blood clot, how, how can that... So, oh, why is that dangerous? Okay, so if you do develop... If, if you're, so if you've got high hemoglobin, mm. which we call polycythemia, mm. your blood can clot. And when your blood clots, it can block your blood vessels. It can happen in your lungs, it can happen in your legs, it can happen in any veins. That can block the blood supply and again can cause, you know, um, 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 a thrombus in your leg or even, even, even more severe side effects. So it's very important to monitor those. In often cases, what um, um, bodybuilders tend to do is get venesection done and get some of their blood out, to drawn out to bring their blood counts down. Okay, so that's one. Number two is... Again, liver function tests. So again, five markers in those. I won't go into detail, but any increase in those can, um, what it shows is that there is increased pressure on the liver. Kidney test. Okay, so four tests in the kidney you have to look for. Again, tells your kidney functions. And then my, I think very important to get cholesterol levels checked. What anabolic steroids do is they increase the bad cholesterol, which is the LDL, and lower the good cholesterol, which is the HDL. 
So you are at increased risk of cardiovascular or heart-related events, right? So this is why I always say, get cholesterol checked. All you need to do is monitor your diet then or go on an anti-cholesterol drug. What about thyroid? Thyroid, yes. So yeah, that's another test we're going to do. So again, so we've talked about these and then I come down to the hormone profile. Okay, so you want to see what your testosterone is, what your FSH is, what is your LH, what is your thyroid from? Because it can affect your thyroid function as well. Okay. I had thyroid issues when I was younger. Obviously, they're all okay now. But um, yeah, I want to speak. How does that affect thyroid as well? Yeah, absolutely. Again, thyroid, again, is a hormone producing. Thyroid produces hormones. It produces T4 and T3, which are two hormones. Again, all of these hormones have an interplay between each other, so they can affect each other. So, you know, you can have an underactive thyroid. You can have an overactive thyroid. Um, and this is why I think it's important to monitor them. More importantly, I think with the recent deaths, I think I keep coming on to them is our having your heart checked, you know, having an ECG. An ECG can tell us if your heart's enlarged or not. And having a jelly test, which we call as an echocardiogram, which is essentially putting a probe and seeing how your heart is beating. Is there any problems? And this is where you can really, you know, go to a specialist. He can look at these things and, you know, monitor you, give you medications if required, or even tell you how to reduce this harm. So if someone has got a large heart, what can they do to sort of... So this... Would, this, would, it, would it ever shrink back? This brings me, brings me down to, you know, the side effects of steroids that are not reversible. Mm. So for example, if, you, if a female gets a deep voice, it, like, and like, if she gets off the steroid, that, that would not come off. Mm. Okay, so that would stay forever. Where certain other aspects you're able to revive. So there is a chance that your fertility may come back if you stop steroids, okay? There is a theoretical um, chance. Um, the enlarged heart, unfortunately, will not go back, okay? Because it's enlarged. It's like a muscle. You can't ask it to shrink back. So then you're looking at ensuring it's not enlarging any further. You would advise the person to come off steroids if it's enlarged. You would try and monitor, you know, his ECG. Uh, you will try and monitor his blood pressure to ensure there's no excessive pressure on the heart. And then looking at the cholesterol levels and trying to keep them, you know, at an optimum so level. very, very often doing health checks based. I would say if, um, you know, for anyone using um, anabolic steroids should have their blood work checked at least twice a year. Which you know, if more do? intense, at four so times. Every six months. Yeah, every six months. And if you're doing a competition every three months, every, every, um, every three months, so four times a year. Americans do that, right? Like all these professional bodybuilders, if you see, they're being monitored intensely. Mm. Every single thing that they're doing is being monitored. You monitor yourself whilst you're on a cycle, then whilst you're off just to see the, the different disparity. Yeah. I think monitoring is important. I think, I think a lot of people, like, sort of like you said earlier, they bury their head in the sands and they don't want to see what the results are whilst they're on cycle. I think that's the worst thing you can do to yourself. You know, at the end of the day, we all, we all have to remember you're in this game for living longer, longevity, looking good, fitness. And why would you not want to know what's happening inside your body? You know, with, and, and there are ways to reduce the effects of the harm that it causes. Just because you look good on the outside doesn't necessarily mean you healthy on the inside as absolutely it? absolutely you know not everyone who looks muscular is is the most fit person I mean, Sean Roden Mr. Olympia he died like there's there's hundreds you know Mike Meltzner you know Sean Roden I mean Rich Piana I mean Joe Winder he was 30 and he was known for Instagram on his Instagram of you know, he used to have really intense workouts. Mm. He used to have a lot he of... He was always like ripped over the day. He was ripped and, you know, he used to show his cardio routine. He used mm. to walk 10,000 steps. Mm. You know, he was really, really lean. And, you know, he died of an aneurysm in his neck, which again may, may not be linked to this. But, you know, it does make you wonder, you know, why it's really important to have your blood work checked. Just goes to show you got to just go for the blood test. Monitoring, yeah, yeah, monitoring, yeah. absolutely. So this question is for both men and females as well. Um, doo -doo -doo. Are there safer alternatives or supplements for women or males who are looking to enhance their athletic performance without using anabolic steroids? A very good question. Um, again, you know, don't promote the use of anabolic steroids at all, right? But there are alternatives that people can do. I think we undermine um, how important a strict diet is, right? Having a good diet, increased protein, good amount of fats, decent carbohydrates, getting a personal trainer, working out regularly. You know, there's lo there are a lot of people out there who have beautiful physiques by not using anabolic steroids. What about, I've seen a lot of um, people using, for example, ashwagandha. I mean, they were saying, are there any nat natural supplements that you can take that would replicate the effects of steroids? 
So again, you know, you have to understand what are steroids doing? They're boosting testosterone. Testosterone is what is producing the muscle, the physique, the everything. So there are natural foods that we can take that can improve our testosterone. Um, you know, for example, if you tell people to stop drinking, they won't do that. Alcohol destroys your testosterone, right? Smoking destroys your testosterone. It has a direct effect on the sperms. So stopping alcohol and smoking would boost your testosterone. No question about that. Um, uh, foods like mackerel, salmon, nuts, beetroot, um, dates, coffee, uh, uh, dark chocolate, all of these things. I did hear coffee um, boost your testosterone. Yeah, well. coffee, coffee has amazing effects on the, I mean, on the liver as well. You know, it, it can, three, two to three cups now in clinical trials have shown that it, ha it improves your liver function. We all have coffee here, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Hot and um, dark chocolate. Okay, so dark chocolate is known to boost your testosterone, sir. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So good fats can, you know, so all of these things, if we include them, how many of these things that I've said do you do you eat once a week? The reason why good fats are essential because um, the fats are a precursor to testosterone, aren't they? Because they're used as the hormones. Absolutely. People don't know like things like fish, you know, like avocado. You need these essential fatties for the production of testosterone. Yeah, I completely agree. Myself, because obviously I'm prepping right now and... Uh, I completely lost my period. Uh, like I have no sex drive, no nothing, no feelings. And uh, I've implemented a lot of fats in my diet. Obviously, I know my period won't come back at the moment because I'm constantly digging down. Um, so the body fat's so low as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's another worry. Like, how can I get my menstrual cycle after this? I think, again, depend. First thing is, you know, at the moment, your body's going through immense physiological stress. pressure, right? Stress, extreme yeah. stress. You're probably dieting to an extreme level. You're also working out. Um, Don't forget what you're doing to your body now is not natural. Exactly. It's so once you stop, and that is, the, that, is the, that is where, you know, for example, professional bodybuilders, they're doing this 90 to 100% of the year, right? So you need to give your body a break. And this is where Simon mentioned coming off the cycle, for example, you know, do three months, take three months off. Get it out of your system, and you know um, you're 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 young, right? You will almost certainly have your periods come back if you stop putting your body through the stress. It's unfortunately it's what comes with, you know, the requirement of the sport. You know, in this case, body was January, you? Yeah, yeah, so it, it's nine been, months. Yeah, it's been pretty much nine months. So I've lost my period because I've always had regular periods. This is I what I was about to ask. Did you have a regular periods yes, before this? There I've, you go. I've never had issues with my period, and then. March was my last period. So then obviously I didn't have it since so, June. Then I had four weeks kind of rest kind of thing before starting prepping again. So obviously I was a little bit worried like, oh, okay, it's been quite a few months now. I haven't had my period. Like what's going on? Can I ask you, what, it, what, is, what does prepping mean? I know it's like a lot of exercise. Oh, it's diet. Yeah. Dieting, yeah. And what does diet mean? Just extreme caloric restriction or eating any particular stuff? What do you watch? So like calorie deficit, intense cardio, intense weight training. Basically, you evolve, <laughs> life revolves around competing, preparation for competing. So putting your body through a lot of stress. Torture. A lot of stress. I can imagine. How much calories do you take then? Right now, I'm probably on my training days is like 1,400 wow. and non-training days. It's and don't forget she's training five days a week, quite intense, yeah. intense, and she's doing cardio an hour a day. Yeah. And she's got a full-time job. A day. And she's yeah. working. So it's, it's a lot of yeah. activity for me. I think it's, it does start playing up, even with the mental issues. Yeah. You mentioned bodybuilding affects your mental health, um, even post-show, obviously. As well, lack of sleep as well because it sort of affects your sleep, diet, and um, how, how many hours you sleep? You, you well, like? so far I've I've had an I've hadn't had any problems with my sleep, which I'm happy about. So you're probably too tired after all of all of this <laughs> yeah, an hour of cardio. <laughs> so I, I get like seven eight hours. I've, sleep. I, I think I think once your show is over and you start relaxing a bit, eating a bit no more, it will come back to normal. Yeah, you start enjoying 100%, things. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, but touching back, I did mention ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is everywhere, everywhere. now on yeah. social media. Yeah. What is this? So ashwagandha has been there for, you know, years and years, right? It's an ancient Indian, you know, herb, let's call it this way, right? Ashwagandha has been there. Again, lots of proven benefits anecdotally, which means people swear by it. Again, I'm from a being from a medical background. We're almost, you know, 
always told to talk about clinical trials and science. Obviously, we've not done any clinical trials on ashwagandha, so we can't say it's proven. But again, people swear by it. There's lots and lots of benefits. I've heard it apparently increased your sex drive. Uh, I've heard it makes you more calm. Like, that's what I've heard from social media. But what's your perspective on this? That's correct. So, you know, the reports that are there on the internet, when you read about ashwagandha, again, causes mental calmness, um, can increase your sex drive, um, improves your sleep, improves your energy. Um, again, from a medical background, we don't really, you know, look at the spices or the herbs or the ancient Indian or Chinese medication, but people use it. You know, um, I was discussing this with one of the longevity doctors and they love it. You know, this is kind of new. Um, you know, a lot of people in America use it. So again, it's available over the counter. I don't think there's any harm in taking it. I've, I've taken ashwagandha, especially to help me relax and sort of switch off at night. Which, and I do find when I do take it, I do sleep a lot better. Yeah. A better quality of sleep. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't. Maybe it's a placebo, but I think uh, I, I don't take it all the time. But I'll go through this phase where I will take it from six weeks. But I do notice some some sort of benefits from yeah, taking it. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Um, we're going to wrap this up, yeah. Um, but I just want to talk about you've got a, a very exciting project happening next month. Or yeah, absolutely. So um, it'll be a nice time to talk about it. So we're opening House of Health. House of Health is a premier health hub that we're opening in Jewelry Quarter in Birmingham. Again, our focus is on longevity, men's health, women's health, really try, trying to target people who really want to know more about their health. So we provide not only uh, private GP appointments, blood testing, health checks, but a lot of our focus is on body mass composition. We've got special machinery coming, which will tell you exactly how much skeletal muscle you have. What is your body fat percentage? What is your basal metabolic rate? And then we've got specialists who are female health experts, menopause specialists for anyone who's, who really wants to know what's, what's happening with their body. Um, in addition, we've got diagnostics. Uh, and we're really excited to really welcome Members of Ultimate Fitness, for example, we're partnering with and, you know, other um, 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 colleagues and friends from the fitness community. I think they are a group of people who are neglected in some way. They don't know where to go if they have any issues. Again, we'll be very happy to look after them. Um, our GPs and doctors are well equipped. Um, so, yeah, really excited to be opening House of Health and at the end of September. Because everything we've talked about this podcast about prevention and like blood testing, you're going to offer these services at your place, aren't you? Absolutely. So we'll be giving blood testing, health checks, you know, all these blood work that we've talked about. Uh, we have an ECG machine. You can have your ECG done. And then we can uh, monitor and advise on any abnormalities on your blood tests. Um, so yeah, we, we're very equipped to... So if someone gets a blood test, you'll, you'll advise them if something's out, the marks are out, you'll explain to them how to sort of... Absolutely. Bring everything back in range. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you've got an increased cardiovascular risk, mm -hmm. We can monitor your blood pressure. We can start you on treatments. We can monitor you. We're also thinking about starting a subscription service. So, you know, so you subscribe to us monthly. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and you can we can have three monthly blood mm -hmm. tests included in that subscription. You can have, you can speak to a GP the next day over your telephone. So really we're trying to streamline um, a very redundant and a very kind of difficult to get to, um, you know, uh, medical um, especially our GP colleagues, you know, they are struggling and people always complain about speaking to someone. So we will really eliminate that, I think, with the House of Health. So I think everything is done online now. So it's such a good idea that you have someone to actually speak to. And even with the blood results, for example, me, I, I, I don't know what these numbers mean. Yeah. So even asking for advice and actually having someone there explain it to you, okay, uh, you need to fix this or this is good. It's actually a very, very good idea. Absolutely. And we, you know, we've eliminated that thing of you coming to us as well. So we have remote blood testing kits. So wherever you are in the UK, you can speak to one of our GPs online. And if you need blood testing, we can deliver the kit to your home. All you need to do is put a finger prick, put a few drops of blood and send it back. And we can check pretty much everything through those blood tests. And you, you, next day you can have an appointment with us via, via video link or a telephone and we can discuss the results. Can you do the blood testing person? Absolutely. Yeah. So we have in-house blood testing. You can just walk in whenever you want, make an appointment. We can do the blood test, have the results next day. So what's the address of the House of Health? So we will be based on Pope Street. Um, this is in Jewelry Quarter. Um, we'll try and put a link um, in this podcast. Yeah. Um, I opened the clinic a few months ago, a few, a few months ago and it is 
I think once it's finished, it's going to be something very, very special. Yeah, and we're very excited. Yeah. We we want to bring that premier feel to a health club, you know, where people can associate themselves with a high-end brand. They walk in and they say, wow, this is where we want to have our, you know, um, health checked. I think Birmingham was very lucky to have such a, an amazing facility, especially for athletes. There's nothing wrong like that in Birmingham. So um, if you remember Ultimate Fitness, you'll get looked after. No, absolutely. So we're offering a special discount to all Ultimate Fitness uh, members. You'll have priority booking with our GPs. You'll have priority booking with all our specialists. We have psychiatrist, um, a plastic surgeon, um, and um, a person who can do your ultrasound. So we have all specialties there. Or areas, yeah. Absolutely. So how can people, if they want to message you direct, how can people get a hold of you? So... so Instagram handle. Absolutely. So our Instagram handle, we'll put it on the description below. It's called House of Health. Uh, we're also on YouTube. We've got a YouTube channel. Uh, we have all social media channels currently active. And you've got your own podcast as well. And we've started our own health out. podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we'll, we'll have you on our podcast as well, Simon. And love to. Yeah. Um, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we've only just really scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. We could have like probably another 10 of these podcasts and uh, talk about, go a bit deeper into different subjects absolutely uh, yeah it's good for like the younger generation for example me to learn absolutely what's going on. absolutely we can always do you know multiple podcasts again i i love this topic because i i, I enjoy following bodybuilders and i've done it over something, the years something close to home isn't it it's close yeah. to home and you know i just follow them and i just get excited by the science and how things are evolving and of course being with friends with simon looking at all the kind of legends that come to this gym you know it, it just keeps you motivated and we're very excited to partner with you right well um thank you everyone for watching don't forget like subscribe and comment comment and a big thank you again no problem the day. Pleasure. thank you it was great great being here thank we'll you we'll see you soon